Parker, Jose Mandel here from Living Stars. He's coming up with a nice special show this evening, and uh, he's asked me to assist uh, with the operations. So I'm delighted to, to do what I can to help out. And without further ado, I'm going to need some introduction. The infamous Dr. Jose Mangle, the butcher of Buenos Aires. I am the exploitation coordinator here. The reason I'm out here, the reason a lot of us are out here, we come out because the drive-in holds this sort of je ne sais quoi, this unearthly attraction to it. It's not, it's not because the, the, the actual film experience is better. You have all kinds of distractions that would drive you crazy in an indoor theater. It's not for the picture quality or stuff, certainly not the sound. It's just something about the whole feeling, this sort of, uh, it's almost a controlled anarchy. You're here, you create your own environment around you. You bring with you whatever you, whatever you, it takes for you to have a good time. And what we're trying to do here is bring the drive-in back to what it used to be in its glory days where the drive-in itself had to do more other than just be there. We're having these events, trying to actually make an event for somebody rather than rather than them having to like provide their own. I'm dressed up like this to uh, celebrate our Schlocktoberfest. Um, we've got live blood wrestling tonight and the vampire, the look of vampire dress and everything goes along with the films, the playgirls and the vampire and the vampire lovers. And um, I will be selling hot dogs and popcorn. Blood wrestling we thought was a very inspired idea. No one's done this before and we're really excited about it, but we thought, where are we going to find anybody to do this? And luckily we encountered some people and, and now they owe us a big favor. So we hope they show up. <laughs> I have a feeling they're going to throw me in otherwise. Right here you see the astounding, chilling image of our vat of blood, where now it's a, a very unimpressive uh, blue mess. Soon will be a very, perhaps unimpressive, red mess. I'm about to cook up a batch of blood. Our own secret formula involves um, certain coloring agents, a little thickener, and intense searing heat for about who knows how long I will be up here cooking this. We haven't tested the capacity of our, our tank, but uh, we will be doing a batch here. While the girls uh, tussle and tear at each other's throats, we'll be having a mood music with the theremin, which I'll also be playing, and with the drummer, who I hope indeed shows up. I'm the mistress of ceremonies. That's my purpose. But I am also out looking for a bite. <laughs> Any volunteers? Well, the drive-in has a lot to offer to the public. It's a unique form of entertainment. You can sit in your car if you don't want to be bothered. You can bring friends, bring coolers out, and just sit and enjoy yourself out under the stars. So it's a really special experience. It's not just going to be a drive-in theater, it's going to be a drive-in adventure theater. You're going to come here and be able to barbecue with your family. We're not looking to, to, to maximize everything. We're going to barbecue and you're going to be able to sit out here and, and visit with neighbors and friends. And we hope to put on other shows, classic 50s uh, bands and jazz festivals. Everything that you've seen encompassed in a very compact, safe environment. And I think that's what the value is to the community. And I think they should get out and support it. Toward the waning years of the drive-in, drive-ins got kind of a reputation as really seedy, undesirable places because they were showing like triple X-rated movies. It's going to be hard in some people's minds to overcome that. I've spoken to people who said, oh, I wouldn't go down there for a million bucks. Um, and you can't, what can you say to that? Starting off when it was built, it was it wasn't too popular then, but as the years went along, it got popular. It was really popular, I think it was, yeah. Most of them young, young teenage kids, and uh, they all lined on those back rows back there, and uh, have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> 
at, on the weekends, that's where they met at, back here in the back of the drive-in, sitting on the back of the trucks and just gathering and talking and carrying on. Some got a few arguments, but I just tell them to quieten down, and that's all it was to it. The parents believe if I was here, their kids would be safe. A lot of them wasn't allowed to come if, if it wasn't for me out here because they said it was so rough, but it, it wasn't so. That's on people that just don't understand the kids, I guess. I've lived in the Central Florida area since 1948. I used to uh, frequent the drive-in theaters quite a lot when I was a teenager. Well, uh, I grew up in the uh, Washington Shores area when they had the uh, drive-in theater in Washington Shores. I don't know if you're old enough to remember that or not, but my only personal experience that I had with the drive-in theater is that I could slip in at night. <laughs> And uh, I used to have some great times there. Well, we used to go like three, four, maybe five at the most in groups, you know, because they had bleachers at that particular theater that I'm talking about. That you could pay, I think it was a quarter at that time, and go in and sit on the bleachers, and that was that was great fun. Uh, this uh, particular drive-in uh, was known as uh, PB's Passion Pit at one time and they had somebody patrol the drive-in uh, with flashlights to be sure you weren't doing anything unseemly in the car. And uh, I hear so many stories about people meeting their wives. Where I'm standing right here, uh, the concession stand operator, when it was running fully, uh, told me that she met her husband here. I can tell you of someone else who's told me of their memories, uh, one of them being that uh, he dated his wife here. And his wife uh, would make them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and they would each uh, pitch in 50 cents for gas and 50 cents to get in the movie, and they would come to the drive-in on the weekend. So they're happily married. I guess now they must be about 30 or 40 years into their marriage, but this was their entertainment for the weekend was the drive-in. Peavy's passion pit. <laughs> That's what they call it anyway, so why not go with it? A lot of people told me they, that's where I met my wife, at Peavy's passion pit. That's true. I ain't joking. I wouldn't really true. I don't know what the other people think about it, but I think it's pretty nice anyway. Back in New Jersey, uh, I did take one of my first dates. Yes, we went to a drive-in theater. Uh, I can't say anything spectacular happened because I was always interested in the theater and the drive-in itself, but uh, uh, it used to be fun. We're talking about the late 60s here. Yeah, we took a lot of, took a lot of dates to drive-ins, and uh, that was always... Uh, I used to like, just like going to drive-ins more than indoor theaters. It was a lot more fun. Uh, I know you always get the double features, the triple features. Uh, I went to drive-ins in the snow, uh, you know, in, in, in the summertime when it was hot. It was just an, an all-year an all experience. I broke up with my first serious girlfriend at a drive-in. I can still remember the movie. Love is of Many Splendor Things was playing, and uh, she told me she didn't want to see me anymore. I say, I broke up with she dumped me basically, and that was the Pine Hills drive-in, that wasn't this drive-in.